Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is introduction to lenses, and we want to know how can a lens be described and in what manner does a converging or a diverging lens refract light. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. You can think of a lens as being a collection of tiny refracting prisms that act together to refract and focus light so as to produce discernible images of objects viewed through the lens. Here we see on the left a collection of refracting prisms that are put together in such a manner as to form a, the shape of a converging lens. When parallel incident rays from a distant source approach this collection of prisms, we would observe the light refracting as they enter the prism and refracting again as it exits the prism. And the net effect of the refraction upon entry and upon exit is to converge the light or to focus it to a point. Converging lenses are referred to as converging lenses because they converge parallel incident rays to a point. Here on the right we have a collection of prisms organized in such a way that they form the shape of a diverging lens. As parallel rays of light from a distant source approach this collection of prisms, each light ray will encounter a surface which is angled differently than it was for the converging lens. The result is that as light refracts upon entry and refracts again upon exiting this collection of prisms, the light rays are observed to be spreading apart or diverging away from one another. But if we took each refracted ray and traced a dashed extension line backwards in space, we would observe that each dashed extension line focuses at a point. These are called diverging lenses because they cause parallel light rays to appear to diverge from a point in space. Lenses can be categorized as being either converging lenses or diverging lenses. Converging lenses share the unique trait of being thickest in their middle and thinnest at their edges, whereas a diverging lens, like these two here, have the opposite trait of being thinnest in the middle and thickest at the edges. In this tutorial series on lenses, we will be discussing double convex lenses like this one here. A double convex lens is perfectly symmetrical and is a converging lens. We will also be discussing double convex cave lenses like this one here, which is also symmetrical, but is a diverging lens. An understanding of the basic structure of a lens and the vocabulary terms that go along with that structure will be essential to your understanding of future topics discussed in this video tutorial series. Here we have a diagram of a converging lens, and the vertical line that goes through the center of that lens is known as the vertical axis or the vertical plane. The horizontal line that you see here is perpendicular to that vertical axis. It goes through the exact middle of the lens and is referred to as the principal axis, and sometimes abbreviated as PA. Along the principal axis are two points that we refer to as the focal points and abbreviate them by a capital F. The focal point are the locations where parallel incident rays will intersect upon emerging from the lens. There are two more points that we refer to as the 2F points. Not surprisingly, the distance from the focal point to the vertical axis of the lens is known as the focal length. It's also not surprising that the 2F points along the principal axis are a distance of two focal lengths from the vertical axis of the lens. Let's consider a converging glass lens in incident rays traveling parallel to the principal axis approaching that lens. Upon reaching the lens, the normal line can be drawn perpendicular to the surface as shown. Because the light is traveling from the less dense air to the more dense glass, it will bend towards the normal line and refract through the lens reaching the opposite surface as shown. At the opposite surface, the normal line can again be sketched perpendicular to the surface of the lens. At this location, the light is traveling from the more dense glass to the less dense air and will refract away from the normal line. The result is that the two refracted rays will emerge from the lens and come together at a point known as the focal point. Now let's consider a, the same converging glass lens, but incident rays that are traveling through a focal point on the way to the lens. The normal line can be sketched at the point where these rays reach the lens surface, and we would expect that the light would once more refract towards that normal line. 
that would pass through the lens as shown and reach the opposite surface where again the normal line can be sketched perpendicular to the surface. But here the light will refract away from that normal line and will end up emerging from the lens traveling parallel to the principal axis. The previous slide demonstrated two of the three so-called rules of refraction for converging lenses. I'd like to summarize them here and draw them on the diagram of the converging lens. The first rule is that a ray of light that is traveling parallel to the principal axis will refract and pass through the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. This is shown by the red incident and refracted ray that you see here. The second rule is that a ray of light that travels through the focal point on the way to the lens will refract and travel parallel to the principal axis. This is shown by the blue incident and refracted ray on the diagram above. The third rule was not shown on the previous slide, but it goes something like this. A ray of light that is heading towards the exact center of the lens will refract as it enters and refract as it exits, but the net effect of all the refracting is that the ray of light will continue along its original path. This is shown by the green incident and refracted ray on the diagram above. Now there's a few things to note about this diagram. The first is that you might be bothered by the fact that I didn't refract the light as it entered the lens and a second time as it exited the lens. Instead, I refracted it once at the vertical axis. This is the so-called thin lens approximation where we approximate the lens as being so thin that there's only one refraction taking place, that occurring at the vertical axis. The second thing you might have noticed is that all of my incident rays started at the same point and on the opposite side of the lens they all intersected at the same point. These two points, the starting point and the intersection point, are denoted by the black dot on the diagram below, above. This is true for any situation that any light that starts from the same point should intersect at the same point on the opposite side of the lens. Because of this general principle, we could draw other sets of incidence and refracted rays like this one and like this one. Now let's take a similar approach of investigating the refraction of light by a diverging glass lens. We'll begin with light traveling towards the lens parallel to the principal axis, encountering a normal line that looks something like this and refracting towards that normal line, passing through the lens and reaching the opposite side where the normal line can be constructed and we would expect the light to refract away from the normal line. It would emerge from the glass traveling away from one another in a diverging fashion. However, we can take each of these diverging refracted rays and extend them backwards in space behind the lens and we would notice that they intersect at a focal point. Let's consider the same diverging glass lens, but this time the rays of light are traveling towards a focal point on the opposite side of the lens. However, they'll reach the lens first and encounter a normal line that is shown and refract towards that normal line, passing through the lens to the opposite side where they'll encounter another normal line and this time refract away from the normal line. The net effect of all the refraction is that the light rays will emerge from this diverging glass lens traveling parallel to the principal axis. The previous slide illustrated two of the three so-called rules of refraction for diverging lenses. The first rule is that a ray of light traveling parallel to the principal axis will refract through the lens and travel away from the principal axis but in line with the focal point as demonstrated by the red incident and refracted ray. Rule number two is that a ray of light traveling towards a focal point on the opposite side of the lens will refract and travel parallel to the principal axis as shown by this blue incident and refracted ray. The third rule is that a ray of light that is heading towards the exact center of the lens will refract as it enters and refracts as it leaves, but the net effect of all the refraction is that it continues along the same straight line path as demonstrated by this green incident and refracted ray. 
Now there's one thing you might notice and that is that all of the incident lights started from the same location on the left side of the diverging lens. So we would expect that each th of the three refracted rays would share the same intersection point. However, the three refracted rays that emerge from the lens are diverging and not coming together or intersecting. To find their intersection point, we have to take each of the three refracted rays and trace them backwards to the original side of the lens. And when we do, we notice that all three refracted rays intersect at the same point when extended backwards to the left side of the diverging lens. That point is represented by the black dot between the focal point and the surface of the diverging lens. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you can find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, you have a simulation on lenses, and you have a couple of tutorial pages. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.